Hello and welcome to Bay College's lecture videos for Math 085. This is section 1.3, part 3, multiplying and dividing whole numbers and introduction to area. Uh, in this one, we're going to discuss the properties of division. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is what division is. Division, like multiplication, multiplication was repeated addition. Well, division is asking how many times can we repeatedly subtract a number? And we might see division in several forms. We might see this symbol, which indicates division. We might see something in a ratio or fraction form. And don't fret about fractions. They just mean division. A fraction is nothing more than saying this number divided by this number. And then we see uh, this form of division, which is uh, our division bar here. So if we look at this example, what this says is 9 divided by 3. It's saying, how many times can we subtract 3 from 9? Well, if I say 9 minus 3 is 6, that's 1 times subtracted. 6 minus 3 is 3. That's twice I subtract it. And 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 times is what I can do to subtract 3 from 9. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, because I can subtract 3 3 times from 9. And how can we check or division? We can use multiplication. 3 times 3 is 9. So that's a true statement. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 9 minus 3, 3 times would be 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So we can see how multiplication and division are related operations. And then here, how many times does 3 go into 9? That's how we would state this. Well, that's the same as saying, how many times can I subtract 3 from 9? 3 goes into 9 three times, because 3 times 3 is 9. And we'll introduce long division a little bit more, but essentially what we're doing is 3 goes into 3, or into 9, excuse me, three times. 3 times 3 is 9. If I subtract that, it evenly divides. Nothing remains. And we'll discuss this a little bit more in detail. So let's look at this example here. We have 24 divided by 6. Now, some of the terms that were introduced uh, when dealing with division is the word quotient. And sometimes we'll have remainder, sometimes we won't, but we have to know what we have. So we have 24, which is defined as the dividend, and 6 is the divisor. And what the result is, 24 divided by 6, well, 6 can be subtracted from 24 four times. 6 times 4 is 24. So we have uh, 24 divided by 6 is 4. We have our uh, divide, dividend, divisor, and quotient. These are terms that we should be somewhat familiar with. So let's look at some examples. <clears throat> and again, we use multiplication to check our work. So we can actually use that to do division as well. If I have this example here, 63 divided by 7, I can ask myself, what times 7 is 63? It's opposite operation. Well, I know that 9 times 7 is 63. So 63 divided by 7 is 9. Now, that's written this way. We could do it in any one of these forms. But that's essentially what we do to division, the opposite of multiplication. So 7 can be subtracted from 63 nine times, because 9 times 7 is 63. 56 divided by 8, even though it's a fraction and an improper one at that, we realize that this bar just means division. So 56 divided by 8. 8 can be subtracted from 56 seven times. 7 times 8 is 56, so I can check that work. Now here, we say 7 goes into 7. Well, how many times can I subtract 7 from 7? Just once, because 1 times 7 is 7. 7 minus 7 would leave me with a 0. Now when it comes to the properties of 0, uh, we have uh, 0 divided by 8. Now, if I have 0, and if we think of this in terms of a whole number or counting, if I have no items and I divide it by 8, I would still have no items. Any value divides into 0, 0 times. 0 divided by any number is 0. And that is one of the properties of division. So the quotient of 0 divided by 8 is 0. Now let's look at this. This says 8 divided by 0. This is one of our properties of division. If I have 8 items and I want to divide it so there are 0 parts, 
8 divided by 0 is undefined. And we actually call that the answer, undefined. Uh, for myself, I like to just abbreviate UND. This means undefined. We cannot divide something by 0. You can never divide by 0. That is a property of division that we have to commit to memory. Never divide by 0, because I can't take some item and make it disappear. All right, <clears throat> let's look at uh, things that don't evenly divide. Let's say we have an example where we have nine candies, and we want to uh, divide it between four students. Well, if we write this in terms of nine candies being divided among four students. So we're going to share these candies among our students. Now this, it's not evenly divisible. 4 cannot be subtracted from 9 without having some candies left over here. And this is where we introduce remainders. So let's think, well, what can we do to how many times can we subtract 4 from 9? Well, if I subtract it once, that leaves me with, uh, oh, I just drew a blank, <laughs> 5. And if I subtract 4 from 5, so that's the second time, I have 1 left over. And I can't subtract 4 from 1. So essentially what we say is, how many times can 4 be subtracted from 9? Twice. And then what we do is we multiply 2 times 4 is 8. And we subtract that difference. 9 minus 8 is 1. I cannot divide 4 into 1. I can't subtract 4 from 1. So this is what we call the remainder. So we write it as 2R1. What this says is that 4 divides into 9 twice with 1 left over, a remainder of 1. So if I were to share 9 candies with 4 students, I would be able to give each student 2 candies, and I'd have 1 left over. And that's what we do to be fair with sharing our candies. So let's think about this. There's something called the division algorithm. And it's just a fancy word, so don't, don't dwell on that or worry about the terminology here. But the uh, quotient algorithm basically says, to check our work, just like we used multiplication in the previous examples, we take the whole number uh, <coughs> times the divisor, which was 4, plus the remainder and we'll get the original number back. Now, I know that's kind of confusing, but with enough practice, you'll have that down pat. 2 times 4 is 8, plus the 1 is 9. And we can see those values. Here was the 8 and the 1 to give me that 9 back. So I can check my work. So it's the whole number times the divisor plus the remainder. And that is the quotient algorithm. Whole number times divisor plus the remainder will give us our original dividend back. All right, <clears throat> let's explore long division a little bit more. Here's an example, and we'll work this out. To do long division, we have to use our division bar. We put our uh, divisor or under the bracket, and our or excuse me, my divisor and my dividend. And then we actually do this. And what we have to do is do a little bit of uh, close estimations. 7 times what number will give me 57? Or at, at least as close to 57 as I can get. Well, 7 can go into this number 8 times. I can subtract it 8 times, which would be 56. So 8 times 7 is 56. And now I can find that difference. And this is how we do long division. When we have larger and larger numbers, sometimes we're going to want to use long division. So 7 goes into 57 8 times, which would give us 56. We find this difference to be 1, and we bring down the next value. Now we say 7 goes into 16 how many times? Well, 7 goes into 16 twice, which would be 14. So how many times can I subtract 7 from 16? Twice. 7 twice is 14. And I find this difference to be 2. I can't subtract 7 any further. 7 doesn't go into 2. There's no more values to bring down. This is my remainder, 
So I'd say R2. And if we think about this in terms of that division algorithm, if I take 82 times 7 and add two more, I will get back to 576. All right, let's do another example, one a little bit more complex. We have 216 divided by 42. So, or excuse me, 2016 divided by 42. And we look at this and say, well, does 42 go into 2? No. So I have to go to the next digit. Does 42 go into 20? No. Does 42 go into 201? Yes. But how many times? So we have to say, well, how many times do I get close to that value? Well, I'm going to say four times. Because I, if I estimate, and estimating something that we've practiced, if I estimate this to be about 50, I know 50 would go into 200. Four times. So I'm going to say, well, 42 will go in four times. So 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 16. If I went 5, I would have more than 201. So I know 4 is the value I want to choose here. And then if we find the difference, well, 1 minus 8, well, we can't do that. We have to do some borrowing. And I have to borrow all the way over to that 2. So I can say 11 minus 8 is 3. 9 minus 6 is 3. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Notice I get the value 33. One way to check as you're working through it is this value, this difference, should always be less than the divisor. All right, and then we bring the next value down, just as we did in this example. And we say, OK, well, how many times does 42 go into 336? Well, if I do that same estimation, I know uh, 42 went into 200 four times by my estimation. If I say this is 50 and this is 300, maybe it's going to go into six times. But 36 is getting close to 42. And if I think about my estimate, maybe I want to go a little bit higher. So instead of six times, I'm going to say seven. Seven times two is 14. Carry the one. Seven times four is going to give me 28. And one is 29. Hmm. Maybe I could have went even higher. Because if I look at this difference, let's take a look at this. 6 minus 4 is 2. Let's borrow here. 13 minus 9 is 4. This value is the same as that value, which means I could have went a little bit higher. So let's back up. Sometimes we've got to use that eraser or start over. And I say, hey, I need one more of those 42s when I do the subtraction. 8 times 2 is 16. Carry that 1. 8 times 4 is 24, or excuse me, 32. And 1 is 33. And when we find this difference, we have 0. This means that it was evenly divisible. There is no remainder. So 42 is evenly divisible into 2016. 48 times. And I can check my work. My remainder is 0, so I don't have to add anything. I just take the whole number times the divisor, and I end up with the value 2016. So I can check my work here. All right, <clears throat> let's look at estimates a little bit closer here. If I have a huge number like 267,000 divided by 92, well, that's going to be long and tedious to divide out. And maybe we just want to know the ballpark figure. So I'm going to estimate. I'm going to round this to two significant figures. Don't worry about that term. But I'm just going to round it to the 10,000s here. So I'm going to say this is approximately 270,000. So I'm rounding this up because this value is greater than 5. And then I look at this value, 92, and I say, you know what? That value is pretty close to 100. Uh, if I'm rounding it to the tens, so now I can do that division. Now, if we do long division here, which we're practicing, I'm going to step back to some board space here because I have lots of values here, lots of digits. This isn't so bad if we do this estimation. 100 doesn't go into 2. It doesn't go into 27. But it does go into 270. 100 will go into 270 twice, right? which is 200. If I find that difference, I get 70. Bring down the next digit. Well, now 100 goes into 700 seven times. I can subtract 100 from 700 seven times. 
7 times 100 is 700. I find that difference is 0. But now we have to continue to carry down zeros. 100 goes into 0, 0 times. And 0 times 100 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. We bring down the next digit. 100 goes into 0, 0 times. So our estimated value is 2,700. All right, so if you want to take this value here and you want to actually find the exact value, that would be great practice for using long division. All right, we're going to discuss some quick things here. And that's the division properties. I had already discussed that. Uh, this one here, at least, you can never divide by 0. This is always undefined. That is a property of division. And then we have the division of 1. It's kind of like the identity in multiplication. 1 times anything is that value. Well, that applies to division as well. Anything divided by 1 is this value. This will equal a. And if it's written this way, it means the exact same thing. Anything divided by 1 is that number. All right, and the last thing is average. Here's an application of division. And this is something that we should commit to memory because you're going to be asked to find averages. Uh, maybe you use them in your daily lives. Who knows? So to find an average, we sum the numbers that we're given. And we divide it by how many numbers there are. If, uh, as an example, you have these as exam scores, you have 72, 85, 92, and 88 on exams, and you want to find out what's my average in the class, well, the formula says we sum the numbers together. And then we divide it by how many numbers there are. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers. So we can add these up. And by this point, you should be relatively proficient at adding. And then we can divide it by 4. So why don't you go ahead and practice your addition and division and try this out for yourself. Thank you for watching.